Hello and welcome to lesson 3.1 in the Python tutorial series. Today we're going to be looking at accumulators. Accumulators are simply variables that we'll use in our program that will keep track of what's happening in our for loop so we can use that information later. For example, today uh, we'll be writing a program that can count the number of vowels in a string. If you think of the word hello, there's two vowels in that string. We're going to write a function that can use a for loop to count the number of vowels and then return that number to our program so that we could use that later. Um, in later lessons, we'll also be looking at how accumulators work with uh, list values. And that can be really important when doing some inventory checking and things like that in your games. So let's go ahead and get started with accumulators in lesson 3.1. So here we are in our programming environment. To get started today, we are just going to head over here to our uh, programming window. And we're going to start by writing a short function. The purpose of this, this function will be to count the number of vowels in a given string. So we're going to call this count vowels and it will take a string as a parameter and hopefully what it will do is return the number of vowels in that string. So let's go ahead and put a comment in here that says count the number of vowels in a string returning that number as an int. So that's going to be the purpose of this function right here to count the vowels in a given string. Now the first thing that we're going to have to do in this function is initialize an accumulator. When this function is initially run every single time, the number of vowels we've counted is zero because we haven't started yet. So I'm going to initialize a variable numVowels and I'm going to set it to an integer value of zero. This right here is going to be our accumulator. Every time we count a vowel in the string that the user passed as a parameter, we're going to add to the number of vowels. We're going to accumulate the number of vowels here in this variable. Now that we have that initialized, we need to use an if statement uh, paired with a for loop to determine as we iterate over the string character by character, is the character we're looking at a vowel or not? So pretty simple there. We're going to say for i in string, and we will iterate over the string character by character and each time we get a new character, we need to evaluate it to see if it's a vowel or not. And we can do that pretty simply. We're going to use uh, an if check, and we're going to say if i is in, and we'll do this uh, a e i o u and a e i o u. Of course, we could use dot upper and dot lower, and you know eliminate the need to have two sets of variables here. But that'll be a simple way to do it for right now. If we find that the character we're iterating over is one of these, which are the only vowels, then we need to add to our accumulator. So the number of vowels will add one each time i is in this value right here. That's a pretty simple check right there. This for loop will run as many times as it needs to to evaluate every character in that string, character by character, and when we're done, we'll simply return the number of vowels, and that should complete this function right here. And we can actually give it a test now. So let's set a uh, variable test number one will be equal to count vowels, and we'll pass in a string value of hello, which should equal two. Test2 will count vowels, and we'll put in some uh, a nonsensical word. We'll do A E I O U C V B N Y T R or something like that. And of course, this should give us five uh, a return value of five because there's five vowels in there. And we'll run test number three, which will count vowels, and we'll use the word television. And of course, television has one, two, three, four, five as well. So we should be looking for a value of two, a value of five, and a value of five when we run this program. So let's hit F5. And let's see, test one has returned a value of two. Test two has returned a value of five. 
and test3 has also returned a value of 5. So right now, this function is doing exactly what we want it to. It's counting the number of vowels, it's saving that in this accumulator right here, and then it's returning the number of vowels when the function is done. At its most basic level, that is as simple as an accumulator gets. We can also, uh, let's create another function, we'll call this function collect vowels instead of count vowels, uh, using the exact same concept. But what we're going to do is we are going to, instead of count the number of vowels, we're going to keep it a uh, string. We're, we're going to keep every single vowel that we pass. So in a case like hello, uh, we should return E-O. And in this case right here, we should return A-E-I-O-U. And in television, we should return E, E, I, I, and O. So we're not counting the number of vowels, we're simply collecting them. So let's write a comment in here to let us know what this is supposed to do. This will collect each vowel in a string, returning a new string of only vowels. So that's uh, our hope for this function right here. The concept is exactly the same. The first thing that we need to consider is that we aren't returning an integer value, we're returning a string. But just like we didn't count vowels, I'm going to say uh, vowels will be our accumulator here, and I'm going to initialize it as an empty string. This way I can add string values instead of numerical values. That's the big difference. They're both accumulators, they just have different values to them. Now just like the uh, previous function that we wrote. The next thing we need to do is create our for loop. So I'll say for i in string and then check to see if i is in a e i o u or a e i o u. And if it is, instead of adding 1 to a number value, I'm simply going to add the actual character itself to the accumulator. If you remember way back to when we did the early early lessons, you can add strings to one another, so say a plus a equals a a, e plus a equals e a. So all we're really doing is kind of appending vowels to the end of a string. When we're done, we should be able to return vowels. We can go ahead and test collect vowels now by changing our uh, test values instead of vowels. Um, instead of count vowels, we're going to collect vowels. So I'm just going to copy this and change each of the functions that run here from count to collect vowels. Run F5 to run my program and check each of the test variables. So test 1 has returned EO, that's the EO from hello. Test 2 returned AEIOU and test 3 returned EEIIO. And I can really use those for anything that I want. So in, if I were to collect vowels in the string, I am watching a video on YouTube. You can see that I've returned I, A, A, and this big list of vowels here. And because I have the capital and lowercase uh, variations in my check here, when I collected an uppercase I, it of course returned that uppercase I. As far as an introduction to accumulators goes, uh, that's pretty much it right there. Hopefully that was understandable. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a, a challenge program up on the screen here. So if you really understood accumulators, you should be able to write this next program. Of course, I'll be happy to help you with any questions that you have as you try to accomplish that task. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Lesson 3.1 Challenge Program. <laughs> Okay, so here we are in the Lesson 3.1 Challenge Program. Your challenge today is to write a short program that uses the concepts from the previous lessons. And this is going to be a sentence analyzer program that can count the number of vowels, can count the number of consonants, and can count the number of spaces in a given sentence. So when the program runs, it will look something like this. Welcome to the Consonant and Vowel Analyzer. Please enter a sentence. I will automatically count the number of vowels and the number of consonants for you. And so let's enter our sentence, and this will be, I just wrote a program in 
Python. Now my program will go through. It says it's analyzing its sentence. I added some of the, the pauses that we talked about in the earlier lesson, and I can tell that there were nine vowels, 17 consonants, and six spaces in that sentence. If I were to run it again and use a uh, different sentence, such as Okay, so here we are in the Lesson 3.1 Challenge Program. Your program for this challenge is to write a sentence analyzer. It will look something like this, so we're going to run our program over here. It says, Welcome to the Sentence Analyzer Program. Please enter a sentence. I will automatically count the number of vowels and the number of consonants for you. In fact, what this program will do is take a sentence's input and it will return the number of not only vowels and consonants, but also the number of spaces that were used. So when we enter our sentence here, we can type in today is the first day of the rest of your life or something like that. Our program returns that it's analyzing the sentence. And I can tell you there are 14 vowels, 23 consonants, and 10 spaces in this sentence. I also use the time.sleep method that we talked about in the previous lesson to kind of give the program a little bit more life. I mean, truth be told, the we didn't really need that at all. That was artificial time killing right there. We could really do that sentence al analysis in a you know, split second, but it, it kind of makes the program a little bit more interesting. And if I were to run the program again with a different sentence's input, and so let's say if it's dark out, turn on the lights. If I analyze that sentence, it will go through and we'll do the full sentence analysis again. And there were nine vowels, 20 consonants, and seven spaces in that sentence. So your job is to recreate the program that you saw on here. You can also add a little bit of flair to your program if you want. You could count things such as punctuation, the number of periods, apostrophes, quotation marks that you see. Um, so you could do a lot of different things with this program, but uh, really what you're trying to practice is can you write those simple for loops and can you use accumulators to keep track of data and later report that back to the user? And that right there will wrap up lesson 3.1 in the Python tutorial series 2.0. As always, if any questions come up, if you're struggling with the challenge program or there's anything I can do to help you out, please let me know in the comments. I will do my best to help you out any way that I can. Uh, as always, thank you so much for your support and for watching the Python tutorial series. Uh, have a great day and I'll see you next time.